Okay, so today we're going to discuss research design. For our outline, we will consider why mixed method. And then we are going also to consider quantitative methods, qualitative methods, of course, mixed method. I ask the question why mixed method simply because most of the researchers use mixed method. And it is because mixed method is a better method than using quantitative data approach alone or qualitative approach alone. Okay, so to compare the two, let us see these two examples. So I am a quantitative data analyst. I found that the level of mastery of the students in mathematics is passed with mastery. If I am a quantitative data analyst, how will I answer this question? So I will just support this by saying it is because it's according to the Department of Education order or DepEd order number 8 series of 2015. But why? Again, because in my statistical treatment, I say that I, were, I will use the DepEd order to describe this uh, data or the data for the level of mastery, then I will again use that it is because it's within 60 to 100 percent and based from the fed order this means that the students passed with mastery but why so i cannot actually answer the question why why and why and why and why because my data is limited into quantitative data all i can say is because that's the stu that is what the students got it is because that is based on the DepEd order and nothing more than that. And let us also consider now another emoticon. So I am a qualitative data analyst. Based from the interview, Maria has mastered her lesson in mathematics. Now the question now is, what is her level of mastery? So because I limit my data to qualitative data so my problem now is how can i interpret the level of mastery if my basis is only the interview how and why did she say that she mastered it what is her basis so if you see now the connection of quantitative and qualitative if i will use quantitative there is still a need to give to answer or to answer the question why while if i use qualitative data alone still there is a question that is to be answered so this means that it's better to use mixed method so we actually have uh, strengths and weaknesses of quantitative and qualitative data so for quantitative data they can reveal general, generalizable information for a large group of people. Simply because we can use survey questionnaire, we can use tests, then after that, just check it and then that's it. While for qualitative research, it provides data about meaning and context regarding the people and environment of the study. So these are the strength of the two. While for their weaknesses, quantitative data often fails to provide specific answers, reasons, explanations, or examples. That's why, uh, as presented, there is still the question, why? While for the qualitative, so findings of the qualitative research are often not generalizable because of the small number and narrow range of participants. So in the given example, I just considered the case of Maria. And both methods have strengths and weaknesses. So when we use together, these methods can be complementary. So let's have here the um, different researches, research approach. So we have the quantitative research approach. We have the four main types. Descriptive, correlational, quasi-experimental, experimental. For qualitative research approach, we have the grounded theory, phenomenological, ethnography, narrative, and case study. Well, for the mixed method research approach, we have two main types, the sequential mixed method 
and the concurrent mix method. And then under sequential mix method, we have three uh, types, the sequential explanatory, exploratory, and transformative. While for the number two, concurrent mix method, we also have three types, concurrent triangulation, nested, and transformative. So let's consider quantitative research approach. When do we say that the quantitative research approach is descriptive? So if you can find four questions like just simply asking what is the level of mastery that is an example of descriptive? What is the attitudes of the students? It is descriptive. So all the problems that requires descriptive statistics is called descriptive design. So it's a quantitative approach, particularly using descriptive design. Now, if you're going to consider questions like, is there a significant difference between the level of mastery when grouped according to sex, so you are comparing, there is a comparison, then it means that the design is also comparative. If you will consider both problem, problem on the level of mastery and problem that asks for the comparison, then you can say that the design is descriptive comparative. It can also include correlational. For instance, if you're going to determine the correlation between the level of mastery and the age of the student. So the higher the age or the older the student the higher the level of mastery so such relation that you are exploring implies that you are using descriptive correlational now if in the problem you will consider problem that describe problem that compares problem that finds for correlation then you can also state that the design is descriptive, comparative, correlational. Or you can say that it is descriptive, comparative, and it is also correlational. While if you're going to conduct experiment, then you can also say that the design is experimental. So it can be a science research that you have to conduct the experiment. So it's experimental or maybe it is because you're going to conduct an action research, it is also experimental. Okay, let's try. So for the first one, what is the level of mastery of students in science? So this is obviously descriptive. Number two, is there a significant difference between the mean score in the post-test in English when grouped by sex? So as given in the example, this is comparative. And then number three, is there a significant correlation between the knowledge and students and skills of students in practical research? So this is correlational. So if all of these problems will be included in one study, then it means that it is descriptive, comparative, and correlational. Now, if I'm going to consider an experiment before giving a post-test, then it also means that I use experimental design. Next, what is the attitude of the students towards mathematics? This is descriptive. What is the level of stress of the students who cannot go out due to COVID? It is also descriptive design. Is there a significant difference between the achievement in statistics before and after the intervention? So this means that an intervention is given, so this is an action research, and it is uh, comparative, yes, and it is also experimental. But if the group is only one, then it is pre-experimental design. And then for the next one, is there a significant difference in the performance of the students using collaborative learning and non-collaborative? So it also indicates that there is a comparative design at the same time because it will compare collaborative learning and non-collaborative learning. So this are again intervention that it means that the design is also experimental. 
Well, for qualitative approach, so I just prepared here a table that shows now the comparison of the different qualitative approach. So in terms of focus, for example, in narrative research, it is exploring the life of an individual. So if you consider a very limited number of respondents or rather participants then, and then um, narrating now the story, then you are just exploring the life of an individual. So the type of problem best suited for this design it needing to tell stories of individual experiences, discipline background, growing from the humanities, including anthropologists, literature, history, psychology, and sociology. And for the unit of analysis, studying one or more individuals. While for phenomenology, you want to understand the essence of the experience. For grounded theory, you want to develop a theory grounded in data from the field, ethnography, to describe and interpret the culture sharing group. And for case study, you develop an in-depth description and analysis of a case or a multiple cases. So for the unit of analysis, so studying several individuals, if it is phenomenological, studying process and action or interaction so actually if you use a different qualitative approach it seems that it's like different in the sense that you conduct interview you made use of an open-ended questionnaire but um the difference now lies within the what is the focus of the study Okay, but if you use mixed method research, it is not necessary that you have to choose between these different qualitative approaches because in the researches that deals with mixed method, usually it is only used as a support. For instance, for sequential mixed method and for concurrent mixed method, sequential is because there is a sequence. It's either you use quantitative first before quality or qualitative first before quantity. While for concurrent mixed method, you both use mixed method at that. Oh, you both use quantitative and qualitative at the same time. So for the sequential mixed method, it is called sequential exploratory. If you're going to use qualitative data first before you use quantitative data while it is sequential explanatory if you use quantitative first so you you gather the data first and you want to explain why is the result like that so you you will conduct a quantity a qualitative research so it is sequential explanatory now if your purpose now is to make changes it is also called sequential it can also be called transforma sequential transformative so it can be quanti quali or quali before quanti for sequential transformative for concurrent it means that you're going to use the the mix uh, the quantitative and qualitative at the same time it is nested or it can be transformative, it can be also a concurrent triangulation. So just to show you a figure of that, so we have sequential explanatory design. So the, here, after gathering the quantitative, you use a qualitative to support now the quantitative data. It is sequential explanatory. While for sequential exploratory, after conducting a qualitative research, you want to support this with quantitative so you conducted a quantitative research for sequential transformative design you have this purpose for vision advocacy ideology framework that's why it's called transformative while for so it can be qualitative before quantity or quantitative before qualitative for concurrentness the design so it can be that you give more emphasis to quantitative, but you conducted the study at the same time. So you use both qualitative and quantitative at the same time. So it's a capital letter indicating that you give more emphasis to quantitative. While for the other one, qualitative is given more emphasis 
but you conducted the quantitative and qualitative research at the same time. For transformative, so just like sequential, you have this vision, advocacy, ideology, and framework. You, you want to transform something, so that's its transformative design. So you conducted the study mainly because you want to make, uh, it can be an action plan, it can be recommendations to improve existing program and others. While for concur current triangulation design, so using quantitative, using qualitative at the same time, and then coming up with quantitative data also here and qualitative data. So the capital letter here just emphasize that you just want to give an emphasis. So you triangulated the quantitative with your qualitative it's actually called triangulation because you also you made use of the related studies and literatures to support this data or this these results. Okay.